Welcome to PCR 2019 PCR TV. My name is Yulinda Mihili from Munich, Germany, and I'm here with two colleagues, Dr. Mosley from Malaysia and Dr. Patrick Calvé from uh, UK. Welcome. So we are here to uh, do a wrap up of um, the highlights in coronary interventions. Dr. Mosley, what do you think is are the, are the more important messages in coronary interventions? One of the inter interesting aspects or uh, discussion in this meeting is with regards to treating calcif calcified lesions. And uh, I believe that uh, especially patients with severe calcification pose still a challenge uh, in terms of treatment, typically in trying to get the device to cross and uh, making sure that the stent is well expanded. So vessel preparation is key. Uh, so besides the normal uh, treatment that one has with high uh, non-compliant balloon, high pressure, cutting balloon uh, and scoring balloon, rotability has still remained the base in terms of trying to treat severe calcification. But now we have also two other modalities. Firstly is the orbital arthrectomy system uh, from the States uh, that is uh, going to come out uh, and be available in Europe. Uh, that has a potential of uh, being able to do uh, much uh, more arthrectomy or debulking as compared to rotabilita. Uh, and uh, secondly, the new and which is, uh, I find that, uh, uh, that has attracted a lot of attention is with intraconary uh, lithotripsy. Mm -hmm. Something which is interesting and uh, hopefully we get better data with both systems mm -hmm. and that will help to help us manage calcified lesions in a much better manner. So, so we have so many tools. Does any intracoronary imaging help us to decide what tool to use for calcified lesions? Thank you, so Linda. Patrick. Well, for me, I think one of the highlights of the Congress this year has been the PCR statements. One in particular is the PCR statement on the use of intravascular imaging. I think the problem we have in the community is that there's a great heterogeneity and a variability in the use of intravascular imaging. Some centres like to use it in a, a very large number, proportion of the patients and others don't use it at all. And what the consensus statement did was to try and give an evidence-based and a systematic approach to the use of intravascular imaging on three settings. Firstly, guidance of stenting procedures. Secondly, how we understand stent failure. And thirdly, ambiguous or lesions that we're not absolutely sure what the pathology are. The hope is we get some clarity to this area and to this very useful and developing uh, part of clinical practice. And I think the intracoronary imaging helps us also to assess our ability to, to do excellent intervention, particularly in complex lesions like left main. Yes. Is something new in this um, Congress in well, this regard? Um, there's still a lot of interest uh, with regards to bifurcation lesions, in particular left mean stent, uh, stenting or intervention. And uh, this is, uh, is, remains true because uh, there are lots of patients and doctors who are not very comfortable in treating it. In particular, the treatment of left mean stent disease, because if anything happens, it can be catastrophic. So I've seen a lot of live cases, case interaction and sharing of, uh, of case discussion. The emphasis is on a few um, um, factors or a few uh, uh, areas. The first is trying to assess the involvement, in particular the bifurcation lesion, mm. and from there decide what is the best strategy, whether it's going to be a single stand with provisional stenting or a two stand strategy to start off from the very beginning. And what is important is uh, the emphasis to know that you need to understand the different types of techniques involved, how to execute them very well, and lastly, how to assess that you get good results, because good results, especially in left main intervention, is key for immediate and long-term results. So we need good skills to do this kind of right. interventions. Yes. Do we have something regarding the education point of view in the Euro PCR, which is new today? Well, I think right at the heart of edu uh, PCR's edu uh, uh, um, mission statement is education and learning and mm -hmm. sharing of skill sets. Um, I've had the privilege to be involved in the last two years with the simulator training that uses silicon models to allow people to train 
on emergency situations, bailout scenarios, where people are able to recapture lost stents with snares, they're able to practice their technique in a calm environment with a cup of coffee, rather than being faced with that emergency <laughs> in the cath lab. For me, it has been fabulous to be involved in that as a facilitator, mm -hmm. but it's great to share that learning. And PCR have invested a lot into that. And if on mm -hmm. PCR online as well, there are some educational modules that you can go, and I'd encourage the community to look at this whilst they have a cup of coffee, not mm -hmm. to encounter it the first time in the cath lab when it's a real life scenario. Oh, this is good to hear. It still remains a great school for everybody. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.